And welcome back to more ha a hat in time. Last time we got our first timepiece and a weapon, a little umbrella, which is pretty cool. And now we have a little bit of power, so we can go back to Mafia Town without getting jettisoned out a window. So we're going to start Act Two, Barrel Battle. Each act has its own little piece of art, even within the same chapter, which is actually a really nice detail. Nice little loading screens. So they kind of force us to learn a new move, which is actually really good game design. But this is to teach us about parkour and wall jumps. So if you jump against a wall, Hat Kid will run up a little bit. And if you basically... Oh, <laughs> I didn't actually mean to collect that just yet. And if you push the jump button, you will jump off the wall. So it's sort of like... And this is a weird comparison, but the only thing I can think to compare it to is actually uh, Sonic Lost World. Which means this game automatically does it better. But uh, this is a treasure chest. This is on the way, so it's a convenient one to show. Uh, we got a sprint yarn. And down here, we have another treasure chest containing a relic, which looks like a burger of some sort. Uh, around here, we have that, which I'm going to show before we proceed with the story. I'm not going to do a ton of free roam, just stuff that's in the area. Uh, this is actually a little bit of a, a trick you can do. Uh, you're supposed to get a hat from later on in the game and come back, but if you time that just right, you can actually make that jump. Also, I am playing this on the PS4 in case you were wondering, and I think there are some audio bugs in this version. Because sometimes th I've seen videos of the v other versions, like the PS, or not the PS, the PC version, and there's audio where this doesn't actually have any. So I think there are a couple bugs, so I hope they fix them in the future, but uh, oh well, it's nothing important. Anyway, let's go save our new friend. I'm serious. Put me down, you big idiot. Hey, child, shoo. Mafia can't have child witness when Mafia teaching lesson. Huh? This awkward for Mafia. Mafia not sure what to do. Boss, what do we do with eyewitness? Teach her lesson, boys! So, there is another bug that's sort of minor. Is uh, in the PC version, you can use the D pad up and down to do like a taunt. One direction is blowing a kiss, and the other is like sticking your tongue out. And Hackett will do that on her own. But. For some reason on console it's bugged so you can't actually use the d-pad. It's a little bit weird. Anyway, I forgot to mention we also have a homing attack. Uh, if you jump and push square or, or if you're playing on the other versions, X. Uh, yeah, you just do a homing attack. I actually really haven't shown combat too much. Yeah, we have a basic... What? That's three hits. I thought I did four hits earlier. Uh, if you do a three hit combo on these guys, they will turn red, which means you cannot attack them normally, and you have to use the. Uh, Enough! Mafia won't bow to little girl. Prepare to feel Mafia's wrath. Anyway, you have to use the homing attack to. Uh, do damage. I call it the humming attack because Sonic. Up, this is actually on a timer. It's not dependent on not how many barrels you dodge. Because I saw a video where 
Uh, the bales glitched and he wasn't throwing any, and the event still ended as intended, just after the same amount of time elapses. Ow. Um, we are in a 2D section, and the homing attack is mapped separately from the jump, so we're technically playing uh, Sonic Unleashed, right? This lead nowhere. Mafia need to take care of this Mafia style. Prepare to feel what Mafia do to old ladies! I'm not sure what that description is supposed to mean, but just him a few times. Homing attack means his red, rinse and repeat. And this should be it. Soon. And there we go, we have our second timepiece. Jump up and grab it, and we're done. Psh, can you believe them? What a bunch of losers. Hey, you're all right, new kid. Do you have a name? No? You shy? That's cool. You're a less talk, more fighting kind of girl, I take it. That thing you grabbed there. Are you collecting them? Because I know where there's more of them. They've been raining from the sky ever since you arrived. I've seen the goons bring them to their headquarters way up there. <gasps> we should go up there and get your junk! It'll be fun! I'll take any opportunity that involves messing up the Mafia! You with me, buddy? The first time I played this game, I thought every friend hat kid makes would have a little friend bar, but that's actually not the case. <laughs> so I was a little disappointed, actually. When you get an intruder alert, that means someone is visiting or staying aboard. <laughs> Sometimes they actually just legitimately stay for the duration of the game. So let's go talk to Mustache Girl, as she is known. Are you ready to take down some Mafia? Let's do it! I'm psyched! Let's go over the plan. All assaults need a good plan, or it'll be a flop! First, we strangle them, choke them, and watch them beg for mercy. That'll show them. No, wait. Strangling is too kind. We smash them together into mush and put their remains in a jar. Then, we sell the jar for pocket money. That'll be the ultimate salt in the wound. <laughs> <clears throat> but first, we have to uh, make it through their Mafia HQ. Once we find and dethrone the Mafia boss, the rest will follow. Then our mush and jar party will be no problem. We've got to get you geared up. Your hat is basic and we don't do basic in this gang. Yarn can be found around Mafia Town and used to stitch new hats if you're crafty. I've collected one for you. You need more yarn for some hats than others. I guess being creative isn't free. <laughs> so keep an eye out for yarn. Now you're a killing machine. Let's go get them. She seems normal, normal enough. Uh, so let's move on <laughs> and forget that conversation ever happened. So now we are heading into Act 3. Normally you'll get to a point where you, you have to actually do every act to unlock a final act. So yeah, we could do 3 or 2 in any order, but we do have to do both of them in order to progress with the story. Kind of an interesting way to go about it. And that's ominous. So it's raining and we got a little raincoat, which is cool. Nice little detail. I think it's only in these in a couple levels, unfortunately. This we cannot do anything with at the moment. 
So we'll, we will be going back for that at a later time. So the structure of this project is we're going to generally do all the main story stuff first. And then side stuff later. Uh, there's a few things that uh, I can throw out the names of but won't make sense for a little bit. And those terms are the blue time rifts and the purple time rifts. The uh, purple time rifts are tied to relics you get, like the burger we found. And the blue ones are unlocked based on story progression. So we will generally be doing everything we can in the main story and then spend some time actually exploring uh, other than stuff that's like on the way, which I feel like you might as well just get while you're in the area. Because you do need some hats for the story. So, so it's just a good idea to have uh, a few on hand and then just spend more time exploring when convenient. Yeah, that's the basic structure we'll be doing. Main story, then time rifts. We'll find out what those are later. And uh, then just explore a little bit. Oh no! Aliens are coming for Mafia! I can see spaceship! Muddy gloop monsters will arrive any minute! So, this Mafia game thinks mud monsters are gonna start invading the town. You can actually find little patches of mud all over the place, so let's just do this. Oh, that did not work. <laughs> you have to actually walk into it and not dive. So, you think this will be sufficient? What the? Huh? It's... it's slimy space alien! Mafia's a spaceship! Mafia knew all along! Mafia is being invaded by aliens! Ah! This game is weird. <laughs> uh, we're gonna broach this subject now. and There's a better moment to talk about this, I think, but... This is as good a time as any, really. This is sort of made as- this was sort of made as a love letter to a dying or act, at the time dead genre of 3D platformers. Now there are too many 3D platformers again because we had like so many revivals last year. But when this game was announced back in like 2012, uh, yeah, 3D platformer collectathons were kind of dead, so... One of my favorite things about this game is it's very unique in that you do a lot of things that are like outside of normal platformer genre conventions and also things that aren't just meant for kids even though it's got a very kid-friendly cute aesthetic. It has some kind of messed up missions and humor occasionally. Like, the game just kind of stands out because it's kind of got the sort of rare style of humor where it's very, like, it can actually get really dark uh, while still being, like, kid-friendly because a lot of things, uh, I don't know, it's just, it works. It's sort of like, they know their target audience really well, so the best thing I can say about this game is... Uh, the best way to put it is, yeah, they just know their target audience, that some people who are playing this game are also just adults who grew up with this genre, and thus the humor is also tailored to them to some extent as well, which is actually really cool. But that is number three, so we still have a long way to go. I like these little scenes where they show where the next main room is, a la Super Mario Sunshine. Uh, I'm trying to think of any other platformers that do that, and Sunshine is the only one that springs to mind, but that was actually an influence of this game. 
which explains why I like it, because I like Sunshine. That is one of my favorite Mario games, even if that isn't the most popular opinion on the internet, and if that includes, or doesn't include, any post-game of Sunshine, because post-game, I will fully admit, is kind of garbage in that game. Which, luckily, this game trims the fat a lot, we only have 40 hour glasses, so there really isn't anything that really feels like padding, which is also a nice thing. It's a pretty short-ish game, I should probably mention it's $30. Um, but uh, I think it's worth $30, because I grew up with this genre, so it's a big deal to me. And I just have a lot of fun with these types of games, and for the record, I have played this game four times. So this is my- this is literally my fifth playthrough, if that says anything about how much I enjoy this game. But, uh, all reminiscing aside, that's gonna do it for now. So thank you for watching, and I hope you join me next time for more A Hat in Time.